Welcome back to Notre Dame Day. I'm Jack Nolan. I'm joined now by Rebecca Wingert, the Gallagher Family Assistant Professor in Adult Stem Cell Research. Rebecca's lab seeks to discover new ways of treating kidney diseases by studying how kidney cells form in zebrafish to hopefully unlock a pathway for regenerating kidney cells in mammals. Welcome to Notre Dame Day, Rebecca. Thank you. Good evening. This sounds fascinating, and I know kidney disease is a huge problem in our country. Talk mm -hmm. about the kinds of kidney disease out there and how many people are affected by it right now? Right, so unfortunately around the world it's actually one in every nine is affected by wow. some form of kidney disease. These run the gamut from conditions that uh, lead to birth defects where children don't form their kidney correctly and they range to conditions that come up in adolescence or in adulthood where you have sudden injuries to the kidney called acute kidney injury or chronic conditions that can progressively lead to worsen and worsen uh, kidney function over time. What qualities do zebrafish have that make them ideal for your research? So zebrafish are a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful little animal system. And so these are uh, what most people know commonly as a, a pet store fish. They're mm -hmm. actually just about one and a half inches long. And uh, they seem on the outside that they would be quite different from us because they're swimming around in water, right? And as opposed to us walking around on land. But when you actually look at their internal organs, they share a lot of similarities with people. And with regard to their kidney, they form a kidney that uh, has uh, fundamental building blocks. These are called nephrons, and these are uh, the plumbing that make up the kidney that enable the kidney to clean our blood. And so fish have very similar nephrons to us, and this makes them a really uh, attractive experimental model to get at the the genetic basis of what's the recipe to make different types of kidney cells. Uh, so these animals are fascinating because of the similarity, but they also have some intriguing differences. And that is that these animals can continue to grow their kidney and they can regenerate and recoup from massive kidney injuries, very different from us. So when people have kidney disease and injury, we have very limited capacity to replace that tissue. We end up with scars. The fish, not them, in about two weeks, they'll actually replace almost their whole kidney if they have catastrophic organ damage. So we want to understand you know, why that difference is, is the case. How is that research coming? So, so far, I've, I've had my lab here for six years, and it's been a, a very exciting time to, to really build the foundation of a, of a research program. And what we've been able to do is, is try to answer the question, what genes do you need to make kidney cells? So we want to understand, how do you make these nephron building blocks, and what's that recipe uh, to do so? And uh, if we compare to people, uh, scientists right now think that there are about 20,000 genes that make a protein that make us who we are. And, uh, with regard to our kidney research, right now we're focusing on 20. So we've narrowed that down from that order of magnitude of 20,000 to 20 that we think are really important to make the kidney. And we're trying to understand how those genes work, how they interact with each other, and use that in terms of uh, comparison between building the nephron and development to try and unlock how do those maybe play a role in the regenerative process. Big picture question here, and I know you've been asked before, yeah. but could you explain a little bit about how adult stem cell research aligns with Notre Dame's Catholic mission? Well, the mission for the Center for Stem Cells and Regenerative Medicine, the, the thing that unifies us all is our dedication to uh, really giving top-notch quality education to our students. But the education that they're getting in this regard is one where they're learning to be scientists by, by doing it. And in the, in the context of doing that scientist, uh, doing that scientific work, they're contributing to knowledge. So they're both learning and training, whether they're undergraduates or graduate students or our postdocs, but they're also building that foundation of knowledge, uh, leading to that, that quest we have for knowledge to understand you know, how our world works. And um, together with uh, the other faculty in the center, you know, we want to approach the questions of uh, alleviating human suffering and, and curing diseases uh, from a whole host of different perspectives. Uh, using stem cells in ethical ways. And so the center brings together uh, folks, not just biologists, but engineers, theologians, uh, folks who are, have a, a legal understanding of, of the systems in our country and around the world to really give our students the, the wherewithal, the tools to grapple with the new and emerging questions that this field will confront in the coming decades. And certainly alleviating human suffering. I think we all know someone who's on kidney mm. dialysis. What yeah. a wonderful world it would be if no one had to go on kidney dialysis. Or even need a kidney transplant or exactly. wait for such a thing. Rebecca, yes. thank you. Thank you so Delightful. much. Delightful. Delightful to meet you.